you ever get the feeling that things are happening in which you have no say? That restrictions on your day-to-day -day life seem to be increasing, often by illogical rules and regulation. Ever thought that someone else was controlling things, someone remote, unseen, unaccountable? Yes? Well, you're not alone in your thoughts. Our country is effectively being governed remotely by the Parliament of the European Union, severely restricting Britain's independence. They are literally controlling your lives. No one's ever told us before the fact that 75% of the laws by which we live every year aren't made in Westminster, aren't made by the MPs we vote for, they're made by these Brussels institutions. Literally everything from whether our local post office is going to close to a collection of bins is decided here in Brussels. And it's the story that nobody wants you to know. 100,000 new regulations have come into force since 1973 as a direct result of Britain's EU membership. These rules cover a range of domestic issues such as immigration and asylum policy, energy policy, transport, health and safety and VAT to name a few. They are zealously enforced by our own bureaucrats, many of whose salaries are paid from your council tax and business rates. The EU's power was set to be extended with the creation of the EU Constitution, the foundation for a very powerful European superstate. But two years ago, the people of France and the Netherlands had a referendum on that proposed EU Constitution. It was roundly rejected and stopped the Constitution in its tracks, or so we thought. Undaunted, the EU have ignored democracy and pushed forward with an alternative. And right now, the situation has never been more urgent. We have before us what they call the Lisbon Treaty, but really, it's the old EU constitution, reheated and repackaged. If it passes, it will give the European Union the ability to legislate literally over every single aspect of our lives. The aim of this video is to illustrate the far-reaching control exercised by the Parliament of the European Union and the imminent changes that will irrevocably alter the independent state of the United Kingdom. Britain is an overcrowded island and our infrastructure is no longer coping. In the league table of top 10 economies, England is the most densely populated, even beating Japan, India and China. Our graph of population growth has received a very significant increase in the last few years, courtesy of EU Directive 2004-38, formally opening UK borders to any EU citizens to come to work live and build their families in the UK and enjoy the benefits of a state welfare system unrivaled in the EU. On paper this seems fair and every other EU state is supposed to receive migrants. Yet amongst the other EU countries the UK is at the top of yet another table, that of receiving more migrants than any other EU country, even though we're the country least able to cope with such a sudden population explosion. We're also the least able to cope with the strain imposed on housing provision, health services, transportation infrastructure, well, the list goes on. Official figures have been repeatedly shown to be woefully inaccurate. The signs of uncontrolled population growth are already evident throughout the UK. And it's not just restricted to the cities. Have you noticed, no matter where you live, how often you're in traffic jams compared to, say, three years ago? had problems getting your children into chosen schools, seen cutbacks in local health services. It is putting a, putting a strain on services, of course it is, because there are more people coming into the, uh, to, into the country, but there doesn't seem to be any more funding. So, of course, it, something's got to break somewhere. I think it is a worry. Drain on resources, much more crowded, things going up, and, yeah, it's a concern. Our population is growing and we're getting immigrants 
from uh, North Europe coming in and increasing the population. You, and where do we put all the houses? You're getting more and more houses, nowhere to put them. Especially the traffic on the roads is full. It's too much. It's definitely going to be a strain on it because there are more people in demand for it as well. Yes, you look around, we've got all our motorways. Uh, it's, it's beginning to get like a car park everywhere in the roads, our pollution, everything about this country now is not good news at all. I'm worried already, so <laughs> it's a big worry, isn't it? I'm worried for my children and my grandchildren now. It has affected us. And it concerns you? Yes, it does, a lot. In fact, so much so I'm thinking of leaving, doing the opposite. These comments are not isolated views. In a recent survey, 59% of people said that membership of the EU prevents Britain from controlling immigration. 80% of people say they want immigration controlled now. Clearly, something has to be done. But the UK government appears powerless in the face of Brussels. It is set to get worse. The right of entry into Britain has been granted to all states, including the newest EU members, such as Bulgaria, Romania, Latvia, Slovakia, Slovenia to name but a few. Migration from these Eastern European countries has been growing at an unprecedented rate and Turkey with a population of over 70 million is waiting in the wings for acceptance into the EU. Have you ever wondered why the cost of sending a letter has increased so much recently? Or why you're now charged nearly 75% more for sending an A4 letter, even though it weighs no more than a standard size envelope? Well, we can thank EU Directive 9767. They came up with this new system in a drive towards achieving harmony of European postal services so that we in the UK could benefit from, well, lower prices. What it meant in practice was that the Royal Mail had to open up its business mail services to foreign competition like Deutsche Post, which has now muscled in on the lucrative bits of Royal Mail's market, but leaving poor old postman Pat with the unprofitable domestic postal deliveries, trying desperately to keep the costs viable, but without the profit from its business post to keep it afloat. I think we'd all agree that post offices play a vital role in keeping communities alive. Indeed, without the post office counter services, many rural shops like this one would be forced to close. And yes, the government acknowledges this and has set in place subsidies to ensure post offices can stay open. But our partners in Brussels have been meddling again. Here's EU Directive 2002-39. The EU Parliament insists that the size of the postal market reserved for national monopolies must be reduced and that the UK government must seek permission before any state aid is granted. As a result of this, back in 2003, the government signed away the Royal Mail's ability to control its own financial affairs and a deal was struck which allowed the government to grant £150 million to the post office each year for three years. However, the cost of running the postal service is £208 million a year, which means there's a £58 million annual deficit. The government does not have permission from the EU to increase the grant, and so the debt is increasing, and matters will only get worse as inflation rises. Result? Closure of post offices all over the country. The bottom line? You, the government and Postman Pat have lost control over the future of our post offices. Let's talk about what we get from the EU. Every year, the UK contributes a huge amount of money into the European Union. How much? Well, just imagine I'm on my way to Brussels with our payment for the year. This UK truck is full to bursting. 14 billion pounds of taxpayers' money. OK, let's go. Obviously, our friends across in France make a similar journey each year. When everyone gets to Brussels, their contributions are redistributed to fund all the EU activities throughout the Union. The UK, for example, 
takes back around four billion pounds for various EU-funded projects, plus a rebate. More about that later.